in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Welcome everyone on this gorgeous morning after a terrible day yesterday. It's, it's great to, to have such nice weather for the journey to the church. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Well we have to say Carol and I have just had quite a bit of excitement for the last 40 minutes trying to turn the fire alarm off in the hall. So that's where we've been while well, you've all been sitting relaxing. Um, so it was rather um, something we could have done without on this lovely morning. However, not, uh, many, not really many intimations for you today, just to say that Stefan is hoping during the school holidays to um, have a little break with Lydia and Anna. So I will be taking the service all being well on the 18th of October. So just to give you a prior warning of that. And I would appreciate your support because it will have been a long time since I've actually taken the service. So that's just in advance warning of that. But apart from that, it's lovely to see you all here. And we still have the online service for those who can't come. Although we are aware that some people are in the position that they can't do the online service and they can't actually come. So it's really just trying to work out who these people are and trying to keep in touch with them. So if you know anybody that we should be in touch with, please do let us know. It's really, really important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Yes, I want to stress the same thing. If, if you know about someone who would need to talk or, or appreciate to talk to, to the minister, uh, either on the phone or even a visit in the garden, or the ministers, you know, have exceptions. So ministers can even visit, uh, visit homes if, if it's necessary or if it's, if it's important. So if, if you know, about someone, or if if you uh, want me to to come, I'm very happy to do that. Yeah. I think we, we should also greet those who are only only online. <laughs> so uh, we are glad that the the recording of the services works, and for you who can't be here but will be with us when. This, this service is online. We, we welcome you too. I have a few greetings for you from little Tanya's family, from Arun. They are doing quite, quite all right, but Tanya started a new course of chemotherapy, so they are very careful now uh, not to, not to get any any bug uh, so they, they have to travel to Glasgow um, like two days or three days in a week uh, but but she is doing very well she's really uh, really uh, experienced the miracle uh, since the beginning of, of her problems then I have a greeting from Ruby Ruby holiday who is at home already? That's that's great, great news too. And also, I, I was asked to to uh, to say or to pass the greeting of George Shankland. Uh, 
he is again struggling a bit with, with uh, a serious illness, but uh, he said he is he's doing all right. And he sends his greetings. <coughs> To Christ our King. Hallelujah, Amen. Let all with heart and voice before His throne rejoice. Praise is His gracious choice. Hallelujah, Amen. Your hearts on high. Hallelujah, Amen. Let praises fill the sky. Hallelujah, Amen. He is our guide and friend. On him we can depend. His love shall never end. Hallelujah, Amen. Is loud and long. Hallelujah, Amen. Life shall not end the song. Hallelujah, Amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness will adore, singing forevermore. Hallelujah, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, it is your will to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King. Grant that the peoples of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We pray that you speak to us today, to each of us, exactly what we need to hear, words of comfort, words of instruction, words of exhortation, your words of life. Fill and change us with your spirit, with your wisdom, your courage, your love for all people and all creation. We praise you and worship you, the only God. And we pray together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Reading 
this morning comes from Daniel chapter 3. And it's headed up the image of gold and the blazing furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high, 6 cubits wide, and set it on the plain of Jura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled from the dedication of the image at King Nebuchadnezzar and set up and stood before it. Then the herald broadly proclaimed, Nations and peoples of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of God that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold, and that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I have made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you go in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And those three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Were there three men that be tied up and threw out the fire? They replied, Certainly, Your Majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. 
Nebuchadnezzar then approached Opie of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was the hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shazrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other god can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Father God, we call upon you to add your blessings to these readings, and in your name be all the praise. Amen. upon this church and upon the churches across the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, light of the nations, in Christ you make all things new. Guide our nation in the coming days through the inspiration of your Spirit that understandingly put an end to any discord or bitterness. Give us grace to rebuild bonds of trust that together we may work for the dignity and flourishing of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for political leaders and activists and for all those who are working to shape our society. Let them be guided by the example of Jesus putting understanding and compassion ahead of self-interest and material gain, working for a better world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the young people in our families and communities. May they grow up knowing love and hope, valuing life and respecting others. Give them courage and resilience as they face changes in their lives and help them to see opportunities in all the challenges that stretch out before them. We pray that their elders will remember the vitality and enthusiasm of youth and put away cynicism and inertia as they support those less experienced than they. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your healing touch to rest upon those who are sick. 
your strength to be felt by those who are tired, your wisdom and your love to encourage those who live with despair and fear. We think of the people who know, uh, of the people we know who are suffering in mind or body, and in the quiet moment we offer our personal prayers for them. Especially we bring to you our little Tanya and the new course of chemotherapy. Lord be her healer and savior and bless and keep also her family. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, may your presence be seen clearly in everything we do and say each day throughout the coming week. We pray that your joy and your love will flow freely in us and through us as we follow where you lead us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Others, 
that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. He said to them, but who, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Messiah of God. But Jesus sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief, chief priests and scribes, he must be killed and on the third day be raised. And then he said to them all, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. This was the reading from the Gospel of Luke. I will start today with a little lecture of Czech language. <laughs> there is many English words which Czech language adopted, but of course because the omnipresent English-speaking culture, uh, although you might not recognize them when Czech, Czechs pronounce them, but, but there is a lot of English words uh, used in, in Czech language. Uh, there are not so many uh, which would travel the other, other way, uh, from Czech to, to English. I know just about one. Do you know there is one Czech word originally which, which is used very much in, in English and, and many other languages? It's a word robot. Robot comes from the word robota, which is work. And it was invented by a Czech writer Karol Čapek. And it, it spread all, all over the world. But it's just only the, just just one word. I don't want to give any more language lecture. If you want to learn Czech, just ask me. I can give you some some lessons privately. Uh, but one word which came from English into Czech and is used quite a lot is is the word image. And it's used uh, in a very specific meaning. Uh, you know it in, in English too. It's, it's not just a picture, but, but it means a, a complex of uh, carefully selected information about a person which help the person to look best in the eyes of, of the public. It's, it's a kind of, kind of mask not just for the face, but, but the mask which, which you, or which the, the person puts on when going public. And it's used by singers and, and actors, politicians very much. Uh, actors have their image according to the roles they usually play. Pop singers make their image uh, according to the style of music they perform and politicians employ herds of PR managers with the task to polish, polish their image and cover various scandals and affairs. At least that's what the Czech ones do. When Jesus is asking his disciples, who do people say that I am? It looks like he, like he was interested in his image. Who do the, do the crowds say that I am? It seems, or it could seem, like Jesus was one of those men longing for flattery, desiring power over crowds, uh, requiring uncritical worship of, of the men of the, on the top. And it's 
true is he's asking the question just after he fed 5,000 mouths with several pieces of bread and two fishes, which was, of course, even that moved him fast up the popularity ladder. But we'll see, he, he meant nothing like that. He was not interested in his image. Let us look at what the disciples answered. First we hear about John the Baptist. John was a cousin of Jesus, very popular, ascetic. He was considered a prophet by, by many. He was visited in the desert by, by crowds. He used to preach fiercely and persuasive, persuasively against sin and he baptized many as the sign of their repentance. He was not scared at all to tell unpleasant truth even to the king. So he was imprisoned first and in the end executed. His death was great sadness for all his fans and friends and also for Jesus whom he had recognized the Lamb of God taking away the sins of the world. And people who loved John the Baptist didn't want to accept his death. They would not believe that God could just let this special person disappear in this dishonorable way. So it's natural they connected this new, newly arising creature, a miracle maker Jesus, to the popular deceased. Some, some others were thinking not only about the, the present visionary but but even more about the prophets of old especially about the, the old testament prophet of the prophets elijah elijah is one of the most important old testament characters and one of those who according to the tradition didn't die in the usual manner uh, as we read it in the book of the kings he passed his, his tasks, or he passed on his tasks uh, to his follower Elisha and was taken to heaven in the chariot of fire, which inspired the Jewish belief that he was to come back just before Messiah's arrival. Uh, so the, he was kind of a representative of the prophets. And together with the representative of the law, Moses, they were supposed to pave the way of the expected Savior. So the people were ta taking Jesus as one who is preparing the way for Messiah's coming. Well, Jesus could have been satisfied with this opinion, Paul, being in one box with with the cream of the Old Testament God's witnesses, it should please even most self-confident men. But Jesus asked the second question, very personal this time, who do you say that I am? Of course, it's, it's, it's very personal and I think we can also take it for ourselves. Who do you think? Who do you say that Jesus is? Jesus is asking the disciples for their confession of faith. Peter, who was always ready to shout out his opinions, he didn't disappoint him. You are the Christ of God. He said, we, we believe you are more than only the forerunner. You are the fulfillment of God's promises. 
You are the one we all wait for, the one who will bring the salvation to the nation of Israel and to the whole world. What else could Jesus ask for? There was no, no better title or higher post. Now it would be a good time to start his campaign, a campaign of persuading people, ideal time to, to catch them all. If Jesus was interested in PR, in making his own image, he could not have a better start. But, and this is the huge difference, he on the contrary begins commanding his followers very strictly to keep quiet, to keep it secret, not tell anybody. He doesn't work for the image. He doesn't concentrate on next elections. He doesn't desire to manipulate crowds of thousands. He only wants to finish the task which, which the Father sent him to the earth for. So he begins trying to explain his disciples, his future and his prospects. And the prospects of those who want to join him. He starts speaking about sufferings, about being rejected, tortured, and even dying in God's service. His image will not be the leader of crowds, the king, or the man at the top. His image will be the man of sorrows from Isaiah prophecy. His power will be humiliation of the cross and his only prophet will be loss of everything. He doesn't give suffering of many for his own well-being as rulers and dictators do, just opposite. He is giving his life for many to bring them salvation, forgiveness of sins, and reconciliation with God. And now we are getting to the top of the text. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me, says Jesus. If someone wants to follow me, let him or her deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. <coughs> this is the road to God's kingdom and to eternal life. Not through images and musts, not through strife for power, not through campaigns or opinion polls. The eternal real life is obtained, obtained through the self-denial and acceptance of the cross and sharing with the Lord in his task. It's a strange paradox of the gospel. We profit in giving away. We gain the life when we surrender it into God's hands. The three young men from the book of Daniel made the, this decision or had to make the decision to obey God or to obey the emperor to save their lives but denying their faith or to confess their the faith but dying in the flames it was their decision as it is ours to keep their lives at the cost of uh, denying God, to keep their lives and continue having all benefits of ruler goodwill until maybe old age, but abandon God of their fathers, 
or, on the other hand, to offer their lives in the witness and service of the only real living God and deny their own desires and even self-preservation feelings. And it was, I'm sure it was very hard decision. It's very hard decision uh, when you face some danger or, or torture or even death uh, if, you, if you confess the faith. We are very lucky or happy and, and blessed that we don't have to, to face this, uh, this, this question in, in the free society. But there is many places in the world where people have to decide and, and put their, even their life uh, on the stake uh, if they want to hold on to, to truth, justice and faith. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego decided to hold on to the faith of God. It meant for them to be exposed to sure death in the fire. But they speak clearly in their confession. The God we worship can save us from you and from your flaming furnace. But even if he doesn't, we still won't worship your gods and your gold statue that you have set up. They knew there are values more precious even than saving lives. And they took the risk of sticking to the creator of the world. And it always reminds me of many people in different places in the world who decide to stand against, against cruel regimes because of higher ideals of freedom and justice or faith. Uh, just yesterday I read an article about the situation in, in Belarus. I don't know if you are familiar with it, but people are trying to, to oppose the dictator after uh, manipulated elections and many are being beaten and imprisoned, tortured. But Still, many are coming to, to demonstrate, to, to struggle against this cruel regime. And I, I read a witness of, of a lady who, who was taken to prison, and it was really a strong witness of faith against violence and oppression. And it's happening in many places of our world. And these people, these courageous people, prove their values which are more precious than just our own well-being or even physical life. That are, there are values worth of laying down life for them. Jesus reminds his disciples and us, of course, of these values. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Well, nowadays people are willing to offer a lot to get better position, better salary, become well-known, popular, they would give anything for their health or well-being. They pay for they pay for best food and bodybuilding exercises and for medicines. Many people even pay a big attention to the well-being of their souls and attend various courses of self-cognition and self-realization. And they meditate and work hard on their spiritual life. But Jesus 
teaches us, well, it's not a bad thing to think about these things. But, but still, it's, it's a dead end, or it leads to a dead end. Not that it wouldn't be good and useful to exercise and train both muscles and brain, but we can't save our souls by more laborious strife for its salvation. We can't keep our lives forever by concentrating on, on, on their extending as far as possible at all costs. We can't expect to get eternal life by anything what is in our might. Only the Gospel, good news of Jesus. Only the Gospel frees us from the vain efforts and says that we don't, don't have to take so much care. Jesus bought us salvation and he gives us eternal life for free. He paid for our sins. We don't have to be scared in the prospect of death. We don't have to despair in awareness of our weaknesses and limits. So we can go on in joy and peace, follow Him and devote our lives to His service to love and justice. Not to serve ourselves, but to serve the people around us, our neighbours, people whom the Lord sent in our way, whom He invited to become parts of our lives. This is the meaning of Jesus' paradoxical sentence. He doesn't command us to torture ourselves or to commit suicide or to recklessly risk our lives in dangerous situations. Jesus just wants us to Stop thinking only about ourselves. He wants us to throw away fears about ourselves and worries about our own future, even about our own salvation. He wants us to follow Him in serving others, and working hard for their salvation, and praying for them and for their well-being, and struggle for justice for everybody and in spreading his peace and his kingdom throughout the world. Amen. Dear Lord, we give you ourselves, accept our offering, we give from what you gave us and we give with gratefulness and thanksgiving and we pray that you use all our strength, our talents, our time and our possessions to glorify your holy name and to help wherever in this world help is needed. Amen. Amen. And let's leave with God's blessing. May God shield you in the valleys 
May Christ aid you on the mountains. May the Holy Spirit bathe you on the slopes in hollow on hill, on plain, mountain, valley, and plain. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Amen. Slowly.